Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, we're not gonna be talking about camera bags, but the camera bag is gonna help us out. Today, we're gonna be talking about this little light here. So this light is really, really important for your portrait photography, because if you're gonna be doing things like entering competitions or going for a qualification or a certification, then the quality of the light that's separating the subject from the background is really, really important. So. If you're new here, please do remember to hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you exit, give you a notification every single time we release a video, which is every single Friday at 12 noon UK time, but you can join from anywhere in the world. And without further ado, I guess let's just put five minutes on the clock and get stuck in. So we have the camera bag here. This timber bag is just being used so that I can have a dummy before I bring in a subject to balance all my light levels out. So you'll notice that I have one uh, light with a large modifier on to my immediate right hand side. This is a City 600 Pro strobe. So it's a 600 watt strobe. This is gonna be acting as my key light today or my main light to light up my subject, which isn't gonna be a camera bag, but it is for now. So then at this side, I actually have a Pika 200 Pro which is the light that's been involved in our giveaway. So that giveaway closes in a couple of days. So don't delay uh, putting your name into that pot to get that. So the 200 watt strobe over here is just gonna be acting as our rim light. And that's what we're talking about. So I've had images merit in competition and not gone further. And when I've asked for feedback about these studio shots, the judges have said, you know, it would have done more. It would have gone further. It would have done better had this image had additional separation from the background. And that separation really only happens properly with a rim light, although you can light your background to give you separation as well. But we're not gonna be discussing that today. We're gonna to be talking about this. So placement is really important. You wanna be looking at a realistically a 45 degree angle behind the subject. So if I was to stand, in a straight line to this light, it's gonna be here. So it's got a grid on it, which prevents spill outwards, keeps it very directional, and also will protect my lens from lens flare. So we've got that happening. We have the subject here. This is about the same size-ish as the subject that's actually gonna be coming in to have the photograph taken today. And so I know roughly where it's gonna be. I also have a prop to raise them up off the floor, which just makes it easier for everybody involved and also keeps the subject in one place. So this light, the power of this, this is so important and you want to set your lights up by firing them individually and then putting them all together as like a little full family. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a photograph at normal studio settings. To look at normal studio settings we do have a couple of videos on that. How to shoot in a small space goes through settings in a really easy to understand I think fashion but this one what this needs to do is just give a little kiss of light down the side. It's not there to overpower or match the power of the main light. That's not the point of it. It just gives an edge. That's the whole reason it's there. So you want to start by taking a shot probably on a really low power and there might be no light visible at all. That's fine. Not a problem. You want to keep increasing the power in little stops until you get to the point where you can just see that little kiss of light down the side. If the light is hitting anything on the front side of the object, then usually you want to rotate the light further behind. If the light is not hitting the side of the object, you want to bring the light round. Okay, if there's no light hitting the top of the object and you want that light, then you wanna raise the light up. So we've kind of gone through that process already here. Uh, we're pretty much set up in the right place. Using something like a black camera bag is great if you're gonna go and then shoot a black dog, which is what we're gonna do. If your light has too much power and it looks like when you pair up the lights together for a shot, if it looks like it's almost the same power or very similar power to your main light, it's too strong and you need to turn it back down, okay? Alrighty, okay, so subject placement is um, also important. We've already discussed kind of the locations that we have in play. Um, Beanie's here. <laughs> Okay, so we want her to be positioned in a way that that rim light actually hits. And I think at this stage, it's gonna miss her ear, especially if she's sat far forwards like she currently is. So what I'll probably just do is give that a little bit of a tweak and a rotation uh, and then see where we end up. Wait. Wait, so that's perfect. It's potentially hitting her even a little bit too much now, but 
We'll see where we end up. Good girl, wait. Um, and I've got a feeling we're gonna add a reflector in. So if Beanie can just sit and wait and we'll just get a pretty much bog standard boring shot. Wait, no, come sit. Wait, because we're not gonna have a catch light, I don't think, in that eye. Good girl. Good girl, okay. So you can see from that file there, that there isn't a catch light in the right eye, which is pretty normal with most dogs. So I'm just gonna rotate this light round very slightly. And also I'm not happy with the catch light placement, so we need to go up. There we go. It's like, I've gone up, I'm then gonna come in. We're still sitting um, on an angle. Good girl, Beanie, sit, wait. Good, wait. So she's sat a little bit wonky, waiting bean, but if we just, I'm not bothered about composition, I just need that catch light in that eye. So I might even, good girl, wait, move in. Super, okay, good. So actually I really like that. I think that that's super sweet. The rim light doesn't look like it's doing anything, but what I'll do is I'll do another one. I'll turn it off so that you can see each light interacting and then we'll put it all together if Beanie will hold her weight for long enough. So she needs to hold a sit and a wait, even if she huffs at me. So I'm just gonna turn off A so that we can just look at the rim. Sits on her nose a little bit too much. Wait. There you go, wait. And I'm just gonna turn up the power of B like we thought we might need to do. Still keeping A off. Wait. Better rim. Still on the side of the nose at the moment, but separation, good girl, wait. And if I turn B off, turn A on. Lots of buttons, good girl, wait. I can see A interacting and then wait. I'll turn B on. Beanie, wait. Okay, good girl, super. So that little walkthrough will have been hopefully <laughs> really useful to see how each one interacts. Is the picture gonna win anything uh, because of its composition and stuff? No, there's also a lot of dark shadow happening underneath the subject's chest. So I'm just gonna introduce another stand here that's gonna hold a reflector. <coughs> Wait in. Reward. Okay, good girl. Yeah. Super. Awesome, that's gorgeous. So we have that beautiful, beautiful little rim on that right hand side. 10 out of 10 from uh, for me for on that. The reflector's doing a really good job of just lifting the side of that, that, that area there. Good girl. And the key light's doing a great job of filling in that side. So this, I'm, I'm really, really happy with uh, how these have ended up. Do I wish I had a darker studio floor at this stage in my life? Absolutely, yes. But it's, it's a really, really nice shot nonetheless. And we've actually ended up closer to butterfly lighting really than anything else just with the placement of this main light. So, you know, I've reverted back to my natural habitat, I guess, in terms of the light. So hopefully you can see with those shots that the rim light made literally all of the difference. If that wasn't there, it would look a little bit more two dimensional. That gives us more of a 3D look. And hopefully you can see that on the dark side, there is a clear rim down the side of Beanie to just separate her off from the background. So I think Beanie's done a super great job today. Uh, so she deserves all of the snacks in the world for her. If you have any questions about this, please drop them in the comments below. Hopefully this was useful for you. If it was, remember to give it a like and I'll see you back next week for another the five minute Friday.